Oh, gee, I, what is it? I gotta get this. What you uh, muttering about, Gramps? Say, oh, uh, what? I'm not muttering. Okay. All right, anyway, just be a kid these days. I don't know. What you muttering about, uh, Grandpa? Muttering? Why, you wouldn't know muttering if it fell out your mouth and hit the floor in front of you. Neat, Grandpa. What does that mean? Why, it means, uh, uh you know, it means, um, well, my Gramps? Kid, it, what, what is it, darling? You're muttering. Well, it, you know, maybe I was just thinking, it, maybe more than that, maybe, maybe, I, maybe I was praying a little mm -hmm. bit. Did you ever think of that I was praying? No, I didn't think of that, Grandpa. That's why I asked. Oh, yeah, right. That's good, yeah. So what you praying about, Grandpa? Oh, God. Yeah, well, you know, there was that priest in the Bible. Oh, what's his name? Uh, he, he mistook prayer for muttering. Yeah, remember that guy. Tell me about the muttering priest, Grandpa. Well, now, it wasn't the priest who was muttering, Grandpa. It was that girl. Don't be silly, Grandpa. Girls don't mutter. Well, I, you know, well, I never thought. You're, the you're right. silly, Grandpa. Well, now, her name was Hannah. I remember. Yeah, she was praying for a baby boy. And that's what, oh, what's his name? He took her for, for muttering. Oh, did she get one? Get one what, girl? You really should stay focused. A baby boy, Grandpa. Did she have a baby? Oh, yes, yes, darling. I don't think the mother and priest was much help to her, but, you know, God is good. Yeah, yeah. And so she got a baby. I'll bet he was cute. Was he a special baby, Grandpa? Well, I don't know about cute, but he was special. Yeah, he was a miracle baby. Awesome. Well, I, I think all babies are miracles. I think you're a miracle, too, there, darling, but... This boy, he was special. Because, you know why? He chose to listen to God and to obey Him. Isn't that what everybody's supposed to do there, Grandpa? Well, good point there, sweetheart. <clears throat> I suppose obeying God shouldn't be special. It should just be normal. I want to obey God, Grandpa. My mama says that God is always good and He's always right. And the best way for me to have a good life is if I always follow Him. Well, you're right on there, girl. You got it. You listen to your mama. I love you, Grandpa. Oh. Well, I love you too, sweetheart. Hey, you guys. Are you ready to jump into our Sunday School lesson for today? We want to start a brand new story uh, from the Old Testament about a young fellow named Samuel. Just the first few chapters in his book. It tells us something interesting. Way, way, way back in the times of the Judges. Maybe you heard of the Judges in the Bible. And... Um, in, in a, a very interesting time when all the people, they, they would want to worship like we worship. We go to church to worship. But they would go to the tabernacle and there would be priests there who would help people worship. And uh, what they had was the Ark of the Covenant was there. And they had these uh, different temple utensils well, in the tabernacle. And God showed Moses how to design this whole tabernacle. He said, this is where you come to worship. There's incense, there's bread, there's the candelabra, and at the end is the Ark of the Covenant. And you really need to come up regularly to worship God there, and his presence would be there. So this is a story uh, in 1 Samuel, back, back long ago, where this family would go up to the tabernacle, uh, and a man named Elkanah, and he had a wife named Hannah, and they would they'd have to walk up to, to this one particular place called Shiloh where the tabernacle was. Now, as it was, so this is a story about Samuel when he was first just born and what it was like for him a little bit when he was a young guy, like some of you. Now, uh, but at this point in the story, at the very beginning, his mama, whose name was Hannah, she didn't have any children. And you know what? She went many years wanting children and trying to have children. And she was such a great big desire in her heart that she could have uh, a baby of her own that with every passing year, she got more and more sad about that idea that she didn't have a baby. I think your mommies and dads would probably feel sad too if you weren't around. I'm sure they'd love you. And you know, she was very grieved. And so she would cry. And her husband, he tried to console her, but there was just no replacing in her heart this desire to have her own baby. So they would go up to the temple, and this one year that they went, or sorry, to the tabernacle, the one year they went, and uh, Hannah slipped away 
just by herself so she could go and pray and she really wanted to talk to God and and she really wanted to make, make a promise she promised God God it is such a big desire of my heart I want to have a, 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 a child my own and she prayed God a promise if you would give me a son she said uh, you know what I'll dedicate him to you and to your service he can be like a priest he can be a, a, a true worshiper all of his life and that was the great promise that she was trying to make to God if you would just give me my own son then, then I would dedicate him to you to your service well there was a priest there and his name was Eli it wasn't really a good time in the history of the nation of Israel maybe there wasn't lots of great worshipers he's a little confused when he saw this woman she was praying uh, but um, her mouth was moving but she wasn't making any words it was just praying to God in her heart that's all but her lips were moving like she was talking out loud well, the priest saw this funny lady and he thought she was crazy uh, in fact he thought that she had done something really crazy that she had come to the temple to worship but she had been drinking alcohol and uh, he th he made a really bad bad comment he says lady what are you doing are you drunk what is this what is this business and uh, she was shocked she said no of course i'm not i've come here to worship and and i was just praying to god well eli the priest of course i'm sure he was very embarrassed and uh, you know then he kind of backtracked oops ah, i said a dumb thing and he says you know what maybe i i really my earnest desire well, he says would god just grant your prayer whatever it is now you know that's not a great sign actually when the priest thinks that somebody's praying as a crazy drunk person and it just kind of tells you things weren't actually really really great uh at, spiritually at that time and uh so it was good that hannah was asking this and you know god had something special in mind that he wanted to use her son for because he knew uh the nation needed a bit of a spiritual revival something fresh something better than what they had been having so it tells us in the bible in first samuel that god answered her prayer it wasn't long she did have a baby oh she was so overjoyed uh as any mother just is rich with joy in their heart when they have their own baby and hannah was too and she knew this was a gift of god because she had waited so long it didn't come easily or naturally that, that this baby he was really a miracle baby and she knew it she named him samuel and that means that god had heard or god answered her prayer and so because she asked god heard and god answered her prayer she even gave his name as a, a commemoration of, of god's great gift and his the way that he answered her prayer and promised was wonderful to know that god answers our prayers even for things that uh, are impossible and she wasn't able to have a baby it would have been impossible so her heart was filled god is good but she did make a promise that she would give that baby back to god that he would serve her so when he was still fairly young young samuel did go to live uh, at the temple so that he could learn how to serve god uh, i'll bet that was a bit of a sad day for his mom to do that but uh you know she went and she told eli i had made a vow to god and i had made a promise and if we make a promise to god we really need to keep our promise if we have told god something that we will do like hannah did it's very important to keep that vow now god blessed hannah she had more children and her life really changed after this and a lot of it has to do with the fact that she kept her vow she kept her promise now just because she had other children didn't mean that she didn't miss uh, having Samuel and she would go see him as much as she could and she still cared for him she brought new clothes for him and and anything that she could as a mama to make sure she took care of him but here he was going to have a special training to learn the ways of God now as he started to grow up he started to do chores in the tabernacle and he learned all about the different things that were in there and all the different purposes they had when it came to worshiping God so what a really unique opportunity he had when he was growing up he got a very special education that way 
And you know, Eli, the priest, he was actually kind of an old guy. The Bible says that he was going blind. And so he probably needed help a lot, which meant it was really uh, advantageous for Samuel. There's lots that he could learn and have hands on because he was needed uh, for so many different things to help out. Now, Eli, he had his own sons who should have been becoming priests, and they were. Their name were uh, Hophni and Phinehas. You can see that they're much older than Samuel was, and they were already serving as priests, but they weren't good guys. In fact, Eli kept hearing very bad stories about his uh, son's behavior. And he did go talk to them. He said, sons, I'm hearing terrible things of your misconduct. It's not right uh, of anybody who's a man of God to act the way that you guys have been acting. But they just shrugged him off. And uh, Eli didn't do anything to, to get them to stop or to change or anything like that. So it was a bad, bad deal. And one day a prophet came and spoke to Eli. He said, you know, because your sons have done so bad and you won't do anything to change it. Uh, I'm going to have to remove your sons. They can't be priests before God anymore. God said that through this prophet. And he told him it's going to be a sign. Both of your sons are going to die. They're going to die on the same day. And poor old Eli, I'm sure he was sad, but he just said, is God, he knows what is right is God's will. Um, you know, he really probably should have taken an opportunity there to repent, uh, to apologize to God and try and get that straight. But God was already preparing young Samuel to be the one who would take over. Now, one of the ways that he did this is when Samuel was just young, there he was sleeping. He was there near the tabernacle. And in the middle of the night, he heard his name being called out. Somebody was calling Samuel. Oh, it woke him up. So he went, there's nobody here. He went to the priest, Eli. He said, did you call me? And he woke up all of a sudden. Oh, I was sound asleep. I didn't call you. Go back to bed. Well, God called him again. Woke him up. And Samuel, he went running over to Eli. He says, did you call me? He says, no, I, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. But uh he went back to bed. Samuel was very confused because he was sure he was hearing something. Eli was confused, but he just went back to sleep. He got called again. He got up again and went to the priest. Did you call me? No, he says. But finally, Eli, the priest, he began to kind of wake up to maybe what was going on. He says he wasn't used to it because he wasn't a very good priest. His sons were such bad priests that people actually were staying away. People wouldn't come to worship God because they thought those priests, they're just corrupt bad guys. They didn't even want to come near. So he wasn't used to there being much activity or God speaking or anything like this going on at the temple anymore. And it dawned on him, maybe Samuel, I think God is speaking to you. If he calls you again, just say, God, here I am. I'm your servant. Speak to me. And that's what he tried. And God spoke to him. You know what? Uh, Eli wanted to know all about it. Uh, but there wasn't any good news. Not when it came to Eli. Uh, just that the days of, of his priesthood was going to come to an end. But God began to prepare young Samuel to become. He was the last of the great judges in the book of the Bible. But also the first <coughs> of one of the great prophets. And, and he was a prophet unto God his whole life. You know what? And one of the reasons why is because he was eager to obey. God kept calling and he would listen and he would say, yes, 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 what do you want? And I was ready to do it. But that's not what uh, Eli was doing. It's certainly not what his sons were doing. And God was looking for a guy who would listen to him and was willing and ready to obey. You know what the fact is, is that God, you know, this is important, you guys. God is still looking for young girls and boys who will listen and who will obey. Who say, well, I see what God's word says. And I want to do that. I want to obey. Now, because Samuel was the kind of guy who was ready to obey God and do what was right. God gave him a very special life. He grew up and became a, an incredible prophet. 
And he, he has a great reward in heaven now for being a faithful uh, servant of God all of his life. And God is still, like I said, he's still looking for people who will lead a special life like Samuel did. A life where we listen to God and we obey God and we do right. Uh, there's people around, even like uh, like Eli's sons, who they were should have been religious guys, should have been good guys. And they weren't. That's a sad deal. So just because you're near there doesn't mean things are going well. We have to obey God. But I just want you guys to be encouraged today. It's good, just like Samuel did, to listen for God and be ready to obey. You guys, that's our story for today from 1 Samuel, just about him when he was a young guy, just like you. And uh, just like him, we too can follow God and do what is right. Let me just pray with you guys together today. And let's ask God to help us uh, to hear from him when we hear this, read the scriptures and help us to, to know what it means so that we can obey. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you've given us such nice uh, boys and girls as part of our church and who want to learn about you. And uh, God, sometimes we know we don't obey just like we should, but we don't want to get ourselves in a bad habit like uh, Eli and uh, Hophni and Phineas, Lord, help us to to want to do like Samuel did, to want to do good and obey. So teach us about that, Lord. Give us, uh, give us, uh, uh, have our, help us to really know what your Bible tells us to do so we can do it too. Thank you, Jesus, for this. Amen. Okay, you guys, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for worshiping with us for our Sunday school today. Uh, I pray that you would honor God. Be blessed, you guys.